So in this video, we will discuss what happens to a vector and resol resolving a vector, what happens to that in a case when we're dealing with three dimensions. So up to now, what we have done is we have taken a vector v, say, okay, let me draw the coordinate axes first. We have taken a vector v, let me draw that in uh, yellow. So our vector v right there. And what we have done is we have dropped uh, perpendiculars on the x and the y coordinates. So, so the coordinate axis. So this is x, this is y. This length is v sub x. In fact, this is the modulus of v sub x. And this length here is the modulus of uh, v sub y, where v vector is given by the uh, the components of the v in the x direction and also in the y direction. Now, you would have realized that we only have two two uh, decompositions or two uh, components to the resolution to this uh, decomposition of a vector v. And that's because this case deals with two dimension. You only have two axes to define your dimension. You only work on a plane. But if you try to go in a more uh, advanced system, and the, the system being uh, 3D, you actually need to take the X component, the Y component, and also another Z component. So that would look something like that. So I'm just drawing that in uh, brackets because that's not what this equation um, should should really include. All right. So to begin our 3D situation, we must first define our coordinate axis. So like we did in our 2D case, we have X and Y. But we also have, must have another dimension, which we call dimension Z, and that must be perpendicular to X and Y. So what I have here are three lines. So this one is X, let this be Y, this one here, let that be Z. Now, our vector would be uh, somewhere, somewhere in space. And let's assume that our vector points in this direction. So this is a happy vector say vector v sorry so now we need to do is we need to express v as v sub x plus v sub y plus v sub z and uh, we can also try to evaluate what this these lengths would be these uh, vectorial lengths that uh, they would be in terms of the magnitude of the vector v and certain other parameters like angles and so on and so forth so this was the 2D case. I can actually get rid of that at the moment. Let, let us work with a 3D case of uh, V. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to express this in Vx, Vy, and V sub z. Right, so as before, we have to find the components of uh, the vector V in x, y, and z. So components actually mean the projections of the vector V in the z direction. So if we were to drop a perpendicular on the z line from the vector v, that would give us a r projection, and that would give us the third component. And if you do the same thing with x, that would give us the first component. If you do the same thing with y, that would give us the last remaining component, which is v sub y. But uh, we, could, we could try doing that, but it's, it's important at this stage to really understand where this vector is oriented. So in order to do that, I would try to use this point and this point, and uh, I would first I would do is I would um, drop perpendiculars on the planes, the x y plane, which is this plane, the z x plane, which is this plane, and the z y plane, which is this plane. So I want to drop perpendiculars on these planes. So the first perpendicular is on the z x direction, z x plane. Sorry, that's here. Say this is where it goes, this is where it intersects the zx plane, and the, um, the projection or the perpendicular on the zy plane would be um, like so. So that, that's where you have it. After that, it's going to cross. After this point, it's going to cross the zy plane. We do the same thing in uh, the xy plane. We drop a perpendicular right below that. It's going to intersect at a certain point, and after that, it's going to pass through the plane. So these are the three lines. What we can do now is we can work out a, a cuboidal shape, which is something like this. Mm 
like so. And if you see that the v vector here actually ends up being the the cross diagonal of uh, this cuboid, cuboid drawn in blue. So that means that if we know this, the, the sides of the cuboid, say this side here, this side here, and this side there, then we can work out the length of the vector v. And um, from what we have discussed so far, we know that this height here in the z direction is exactly what would be had we uh, looked for the projection of the vector v in the z direction. So if I were to draw perpendicular on the z axis right there, and this line would be at 90 degrees from the z axis, z, z, z direction, the z axis, then this blue line here would be, that would have been the the uh, v sub z component. So this would be v sub z um, length. Or more specifically, if I work in terms of vectors, this vector here along the z direction, this vector would have been v sub z vector. And if we do the same thing in the x direction, that means if we draw perpendicular on the x direction, from here, so this is my dotted perpendicular, it's going to cross at this point, and this vector, which it would give rise to, would be v sub, sorry, v sub x vector right there. The last thing to do is do the same thing with the y direction, so that would be this vector here, and this would be v sub y vector right there. So the sides of the cuboid ends up being uh, vectors now, and if we add v sub x, v sub y, and v sub z, we must get a resultant v vector, and that's what this resolution ends up being. So, so that is how you do it. Now, there are many other uh, parameters that you can also invoke. Uh, for example, if you know the angle between um, the the vector and the z direction, let that be angle gamma. The angle between the vector v and the x direction, let that be angle alpha. And uh, another vector, another angle between the vector v and the y direction, let that be angle beta. Then, from this triangle, we know that v sub z its modulus would have been the length of this green line, which is the length of our vector, times cosine of the angle in this uh, right angle triangle. So that would be cosine of gamma. Similarly, v sub, say, x would have been in uh, this triangle right there, this one. Um, this would have been uh, the length of the green vector, because that's the hypotenuse of that right angle triangle, times uh, the cosine of the angle it's forming uh, in uh, this in that triangle, so that's cosine of the angle alpha. Similarly, v sub, well, the remaining direction of v, v sub y, and that would have been the same thing, cosine of the angle for y, so that's cosine of beta. So these are our magnitudes of the decomposition. And therefore, now that we know the magnitudes, and uh, we also know directions, we can express this in a, a more involved form. So let's review the directions first. The direction on the x direction, the unit vector there is given by i cap or i hat. The unit vector along the y is given by j cap or j hat. And uh, the unit, length, unit vector along the z direction is given by k hat. So we can use, we can further expand this expression there to get v as, well, v's modulus cosine gamma, that's the, oh, okay, let me, let, me, let me write it in terms of z first. So this would be v cosine alpha, but this is uh, the, the magnitude of the vector in the x direction. Therefore, we must now 
multiplied by the, the unit vector in the x-direction, that would be i cap or i hat. Similarly, for the y-direction, we have cosine beta, so this is the magnitude of v, cosine beta, times the unit vector in the y-direction, that's j cap. And lastly, we have our z-direction, so that's v cosine gamma times the k unit vector right there. So this here in green box right there is your decomposition or the process of resolving a vector in three dimensions. The only thing we need to know there are these angles which the vector forms with the z direction, x direction and the y directions. We need to know the magnitude of the vector which many times we know and we can express the vector in that particular form. So that's how you resolve a vector in 3D. And this resolution actually helps us to do many analytic um, operations like addition, subtraction of two vectors more easily. And we are able to see vectors more easily, which I would cover up and touch on later videos. So at this point here, this is the resolution. And we'll work on this description in a further video. So I hope this video helps and have fun and all the best.